Speaker. Uh, my questions are to the Prime Minister, and um, they're in relation to the recently signed Defense Cooperation Agreement with the USA, and the Shipwright Agreement as well. I have two questions. One is in relation to that, and the other is in relation to the issue of World War II ordinance. Uh, as the Prime Minister is acting Foreign Affairs Minister, I felt it appropriate to direct these questions to him. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Prime Minister, in light of the recent Defense Cooperation Agreement and the Shipwright Agreement signed with the United States, there has been a growing concern among our constituents and critics that these agreements may not align with the best interests of Papua New Guinea. Could you please elaborate on the implications of these agreements for our nation, specifically addressing how they will impact our sovereignty, our economic stability, and the security of our citizens? Furthermore, could you also explain the measures taken to ensure that these agreements serve the long-term strategic interests of Papua New Guinea? Mr. Prime Minister, some of us support these agreements. I, for one, am very hopeful that these agreements will address growing transnational crimes in this country and how we will combat that. Perhaps the Prime Minister can elaborate on this. My second question is in relation to unexploded ordinance from the World War II era. Mr. Prime Minister, through you, Deputy Speaker. It has been nearly eight decades since the end of World War II. Yet the remnants of that conflict continue to cause pain and suffering in many of our communities across our nation in our various provinces. My province in particular suffers from this situation. Every so often, citizens in my province, while going about their daily activities, stumble upon this ordinance, they explode, and they get harmed, hurt, injured, killed. Sometimes this ordinance is used by criminals. In fact, last night in Poponeta town, a bomb was set off, a World War II bomb, by certain criminals who have an ongoing feud with a group of people in their vicinity. Prime Minister, the unexploded, unexploded ordinance from that era poses significant and ongoing threats. The nations involved in this conflict, Japan, Australia, and the United States, should be responsible in assisting us removing this ordinance so that our people can move about, do their business without threat or harm. Can the Prime Minister explain or give us some assurance that perhaps with this agreement, or perhaps in his position as the acting Foreign Affairs Minister, he can compel these nations, urge them to assist us so that we may remove this ordinance from a time, from a war that was not of our doing, but from which we continue to suffer. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, the Honourable Prime Minister, before you answer the question, we have a point of order from the opposition leader. State Team Speaker, I think there are two aspects to that question. And I think the, the, the question relating to the treaty should be held back because none of us here have access to that treaty. And I think it's fair that when the government introduces this on the floor, then we can be able to debate it properly. Right now, he will answer this question without us having access to the document and what's in it. So we can access uh, better for ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, the opposition leader, I made a ruling that uh, the matter is, hasn't been on the notice paper of Parliament. Therefore, the Honorable uh, Governor's question, uh, I will ask the Prime Minister to go ahead and answer the question as it is. All right, thank you, uh, <coughs> Deputy Speaker. Uh, they like, it's in this law time, law. 
talk good mahalo lo ibrong kada members of parliament ministers governors opposition leader thank you lo you may come back long this uh, mid media mid media session and we look sawa long all sumatin bimi ali from uh, charles longa secondary school thank you lo ibrong kada sinan antap to uh, of course As I make response to this question, let me acknowledge all our people tuning in uh, in, the, in this session of Parliament. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, uh, Assistant uh, Acting Speaker, we like to thank you, Lord Governor Jufa, for asking an uh, important question. Let me, from the outset, uh, uh, assure this Parliament that in this session of Parliament, we will table the. Defense Cooperation Agreement that was signed between Papua New Guinea and the United States of America. Uh, it is a public. Uh, it will be a public document. Uh, on our side, will be transferred on the USA side. In every matter they sign with all nations, there's a. Uh, it is also posted up for everyone to have a note on this agreement. So uh, it will be tabulated in this uh, this uh, Parliament sessions uh, and. I want to just, in a summary, uh, noting that uh, Parliament will have an opportunity to be uh, speaking on this uh, this year. Uh, I think the question also alluded to the Sip Rider Agreement. Firstly, from the outset, let me inform uh, Parliament: uh, there is no breach of our country's constitution or all our country's law in totality. The Defence Cooperation Agreement is elevated from. What we already have, in as far as our relationship with the Australian, Def Australian Defence Force, uh, French Defence Force, uh, New Zealand Defence Force, uh, Indonesia Defence Force, and USA, uh, in 1989 there was an agreement called Status of Force Agreement that governed how all these different defence forces and their agents relate with Papua New Guinea Defence Force and our agents. That 1989 Status of Force Agreement emanates or was was promulgated through the provisions of the Visiting Forces Visiting Defence Forces Act of 1975, and the power from that act was sourced from Section 206 of our nation's constitution. Our constitution and the and the drafters of our constitution or our fathers of our country. And wishes, like all other nations do, every nation has foreign relations, government-to-government -government relations, and military-to-military -military relations with other nations. And uh, anticipating that Papua New Guinea, too, as a country, will be having relationship with other defense forces, the Visiting Forces Act of 1975 uh, gives gives pathway or gives us the basis. The legal basis to structure agreements with di different uh, defence forces that we will partner and we will work with. Historically, all nations that enjoy bilateral relationship with us have different scope of relationship in as far as defence force relation is concerned. And I point, I give you uh, an indication that with Australian uh, defence force, we've always operated uh, not only under the status of force agreement of 1989. <coughs> But it was elevated to a defence cooperation agreement, similar to the one we now elevating uh, 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 with US 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 defence. With the Australia, we now looking and uh, and our team from both sides, our legal team from both sides, as well as our foreign affairs team from both sides and our defence team from both sides, are looking at elevating to a defence uh, security treaty. That is a work in progress with us. Uh, it is being exchanged back and forth. Uh, that exchange allows for us to ensure that we are not breaking any of our country's law and we are consistent in as far as entering into similar agreements are concerned. With the Defence Cooperation Agreement signed with USA, I want to inform this House clearly and from our front that due processes of any similar agreements to be signed were deployed. And I want to give confidence to our country that uh, Cabinet do not sit on or deliberate on papers that does not come up to the due processes. Anything that doesn't come up to the due processes will not stand the test of time. Any contest 
for instance, any section 18 reference by any citizen or any constitutional office like Ombudsman Commission. And if it goes before court, court will always rule in the favor of the laws of our country. So knowing this very well, our state solicitors, as custodian of the due processes, always advise the executive arm, any part of the executive arm that is funding in a proposal, funding in an agreement for cabinet's consideration and parliament's eventual consideration. All legal processes are deployed. All clearances are made. And I just want to encourage uh, Papua New Guineans who are listening in. Uh, don't buy into an off-the-cuff statement by one individual and suddenly you make to believe that social media is the authority. We have set processes in our country. Any executive government decisions come up through the set processes. And prime minister or cabinet or ministers are bounded by the quorum and protocol of those processes. We cannot, for instance, at every stage, when a concept when a, when a, when a, when when a concept is 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 mounted, and when the process is deployed until finally the policy is promulgated, or agreement is brought together, cabinet do not sometimes by the fact that the process protocol of the process dictate. We do not go out to everyone and indicate that this is happening. If we do this, no decisions will be taken for our country. I want to take this question to also our country. Due processes of law governs how government enter into similar, in, in these sort of agreements. And the same law, same constitution allows for section 18 references, constitutional references. If any one citizen out there feels that it is not in order, you don't have to ban cars or cause public looting or jump up and down. A section 18 reference is the pathway. The opposition leader has the ability to file a section 18 reference. Any citizen who is qualified under section 18 uh, qualification can file an, file an appeal and contest this sort of. So knowing that those check and balance are in place as a democratic country, we enter into those sort of agreements following on the due processes prescribed by law. And the DCA does not break any constitution. The DCA is similar to what we have with Australia and Indonesia, for instance, except this time around, it gives us direct relationship with Pentagon <coughs> and Mary Barracks, direct relationship with Waigani and Washington, and not through a conglomerate or an associate of partners in the region sharing support to Papua New Guinea. We're now having direct line of sight with support uh, with the United States. And let me also ask you, everyone, does not compromise our own relationship with Australia, Indonesia, Japan, Philippines, China, India, South Korea, UK and France. Those major partners we have bilateral, including Solomon Islands and uh, Fiji and other nations closer to home. This is specific PNG USA Defense Cooperation Agreement. There is no provision in that Defense Cooperation Agreement that binds us from not relating to anyone economically or in defense force side of relationship. And I want to give the full assurance that this is done in the best interest of our country. For instance, an associate signing that took place was a ship rider agreement. Ship rider agreement now gives opportune time. And when this is tabled on the floor, you will have a look. Gives PNG Navy the ability to co-patrol on U.S. Navy. Has a provision for U uh, PNG Navy to also be on the boat, captain the boat, part of the uh, ship that is in our country, and for the first time now gives us an oversight in terms of our water protection like never before. Today, we don't have a ability to have a full knowledge, real-time, live data access on what is happening in our waters or in our land. And we know a few instances where unmanned pilots have come in through plane, or a lot of time there's complaint that in high seas, there are fishing taking place, and there are transportations of unmanned goods and people taking place that we are not familiar with or unaccounted for. 
The Seabrider Agreement now gives us an access and partnership with uh, U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard for our na Navy to have accessibility and uh, visibility in what is happening in our waters in time. This will eliminate illegal fishing in our waters uh, and hopefully eliminate illegal transportations, including possible illegal transportations of log or unaccounted for logging that is being shipped in many parts of our country. And so, Mr. Sp uh, Liberty Speaker, we mean well in these agreements. It gives us an ability to have access to the biggest military on the, uh, in the face of planet Earth for our local interests and not others' strategic geopolitical interests. Papua New Guinea's interest lies deep in these agreements that we have signed. For 48 years, our borders have remained unmanned, unpolished, and guard. It is our responsibility to step up in partnership and to build capacity of our defense force. It is, a, it is agreement for only 15 years. You look at the very last part of this agreement as it's stable on the floor of parliament, you will see a provision. We'll run this for 15 years. After 15 years, any party on either side has a right to give one year notice for termination of this agreement. Inside certain provisions of this agreement, any assets built in Papua New Guinea will remain the property of Papua New Guinea as we come out of the 15 year period. And so I want to assure this parliament, in the present circumstances we are in, seeing the need for our own domestic security to step up and to protect also our own sovereign borders. We looked at USA as a defense force compatible to our mode of conversation, compatible to our, our spiritual worldview, compatible to our system of government, and compatible in our military to military exchanges, and the way we'd like to step up our military in the line of sight to build capacity in our defense force and our Navy. Uh, this DCA was signed and I will be honored and privileged uh, through the defense minister to table a copy of this uh, defense, defense cooperation agreement on the floor of parliament for parliament's uh, uh, periods and <coughs> deliberations. And I hope in, 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 in that moment I will also provide further assistance to satisfy any or some more questions that you may all have uh, as you go through the defense cooperation agreement. It is done with best intent to help our defense force, and needless to repeat, but uh, when it comes and tabled here, all of you leaders will have access to this. And I gave assurance to uh, the students at the University of Technology and students at UPNG. Uh, they were having exams last week, so we could not visit them, but our state solicitor, our foreign affairs secretary, our defense secretary, will visit our two institutions expressly and speak to them on the agreement and they would be informed that it is no strange agreement similar to what we have with Australia and New Zealand but for the first time gives us straight line of access to Washington like never before. I want to, uh, in, in, the, in the other question you asked on the World War II remnants, I uh, thank the governor for raising this uh, important question on the issues I hear. Uh, many bombs going off. The other time, Governor for East New Britain sent me a photo of many, many World War II bombs being excavated from public sites, from villages in, in the Gazelle Peninsula and Kokopo and Robal area. And uh, let me, sorry, by the way, uh, uh, acknowledge the Honorable Alan Marat uh, being present here. Uh, you know, although you unseated a Pangu member, but it's a process of process of court. This is a democratic country. Everyone's entitled to go to court. We welcome you back to the floor of parliament. Uh, but having said this, uh, uh, there are many, many World War II remnants in all part of our country. Uh, taking this question again, I will inform uh, both Japan, uh, the government of Japan and the government of USA. And in the USA, this DCA also entails some of these things. There will be key strategic sites they will be working, including picking up on the legacy issues of the World War II and coming back. So those will be issues we worked upon. We want no unsafe area in our country in respect to 
the World War II remnant. So thank you for asking these questions. I will inform the two uh, embassies here, and I will get back to you, Governor, and also through the Parliament, since this is a Parliament question. Thank you very much.